to Winnipeg's Classic 107. My name is Simon Rosnack. No matter the weather, rain or shine promises to shed new light on rarely heard works of a German Baroque master and celebrate the singular stylings of a prairie songstress. Winnipeg's Baroque Chamber Choir, Canzona, opens their season collaborating alongside Rain Hamilton in a concert this weekend. And to hear more about it, I'm joined by newly minted Canzona Artistic Director Elroy Friesen. Welcome to the show, Elroy. Hey, Simon. Good to be here. Uh, well, congrats on the new gig. Thank you. Um, you, of course, are our director of choral studies at the University of Manitoba. You were my conductor in University Singers uh, in demand nationally and internationally as a conductor and con- clinician. Just to catch listeners up a little bit, um, this is actually your first stint, a second go round with Canzona, as most unfortunate circumstances pulled you away from the group a few years back. H- how does it feel uh, to return to Canzona now? Well, I love Baroque music, uh, and so to have a uh, to work with a with an instrument, as it were, that really gets how Baroque music can work is is really exciting. I was able to bring them in, uh, bring Kenzona in to join me with the WSO last year with with Messiah, and it was just like, like match made in heaven. Uh, again, it was just like ah, oh, this is so good. Handel and Kenzona and myself, the WSO, so much fun. At that time, I had no idea that there would be the opportunity to be artistic director. So it's still new, and uh, I'm still running <laughs> to play catch up. But it's great. It's great. I'm very excited. Uh, well, very excited to see where you take things. Um, you were to take over from your predecessor, uh, Henry Engbrecht, who, of course, leaves this indelible mark on yeah. the choir. Yeah. Um, but but I'm curious, and, and like you say, this is early days. You're still playing catch up and, and kind of reacquainting yourself with the singers. But but how do you feel like the choir's grown or changed or developed under the artistic leadership of, of Kathleen Allen the past six seasons or so? I think they've gotten artistically. Uh, they're willing to go out of the out of the baroque silo a little bit more and uh, give start thinking about how to recontextualize and give new contexts for baroque music for today. And really interesting pairings like this concert coming up, Rain or Shine. That was that was the dream of Kathleen Allen. Uh, she and Rain dreamed this thing up, um, and I just happened to get to step in and and help bring it to reality. But I love it. Rain is amazing, and her her while well, her background is a musicologist, and the way she works with strings as her band, as it were. Um, pairing up with Kenzona and we, you know, doing all these crossovers. It's just, it's exciting. And this is not like your grandma's Baroque concert. You know what I mean? And I think, I think Kenzona, I mean, they've done creative things with media and, and that kind of thing and, and bringing in musicians from across the country and, and um, trying new, new things out. And I think that is sort of like the, that's sort of like showing us where we maybe can look for the future. Yeah. Um, your uh, passion for the Baroque and for choral music in general, I mean, it's just infectious. But, but you say, I mean, this isn't your grandmother's Baroque. Um, there is nothing um, stodgy in the way that you conduct Baroque music. As someone who's sung under you, it is alive, it is moving. And I feel like that is very apparent in, in this particular program, right? I mean, like, this is a reimagining, a recontextualizing of Baroque, pairing it with a, a modern, incredible, and, and talented singer, songwriter, and, and instrumentalist in, in Rain Hamilton. Oh, yeah. And, and the venue at the Exchange Event Center, uh, you know, the bar will be open the whole concert. Uh, it will feel uh, more like a nightclub in many ways than like a Baroque concert hall or a church, for sure. Um, and I, w- I was just sort of re- re-reading my notes um, on Shine, and what was he thinking with writing this, bro- this, this secular music? He intended this for social gatherings, um, and that is what we are doing. We're having a social gathering on Sunday evening, and, and his music, I've never conducted Shine before. I would never have chosen Shine because I was ignorant. And then I found the collected works at the University of Manitoba Library, and we have everything he's ever written that's been printed for choir. Um, And so there's this this great treasure trove of secular songs that I can't wait for people to hear. We've had a great time preparing it. Uh, So if listeners just kind of... um Something caught their attention there. Yes, we keep talking about Shine. Rain Hamilton, Johann Hedwan Shine, giving us this very clever title, Rain or Shine, S-C-H-E-I-N. Um, you mentioned, you know, what was he doing writing these secular songs? And I was, I was just doing some digging on, on Johann Hedwan Shine, who served as Thomas Cantor in Leipzig before Johann Sebastian Bach moved into the role. And unlike a lot of his contemporaries, Shine was one of those composers who wrote 
both secular and sacred music in, in equal portion. Yeah. If you look at his collected catalog, right, there are equal parts yeah. of sacred works as there are secular. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about the, the works that are going to be performed, the Diletti Pastorali and the uh, Studentenschmaus, the, the student drinking song? Yeah. That's what yeah. they are, yeah. right? I think that was the, the Studentenschmaus was the first thing that Kathleen Allen was thinking of. She knew that Shine somewhere had written these songs. He wrote his own poetry for these. <laughs> um, they're they're very tongue in cheek. They're hilarious. They're they're naughty. Uh, they're improper. They poke at things like the church, like purity, uh, like different things that we might you know think would be very proper. And he was not. He did not seem to go that way. Um, so these student drinking songs uh, seem to be a great fit for this. And then I was like, okay, well we can't just sing drinking songs in this program. And so there are many collections, like uh, Venus Kreuzlein, we, we're doing a little bit from there, um, just this this brief um, of, of songs that celebrate characters like Venus and Cupid. Cupid is always involved in this concert. Um, Cupid is either the troublemaker or is the one who guides you to love, and and and, and this, this character is always making a presence. And so we sing a lot about Cupid in this concert. Um, and then um, Shine was taken somehow with the new early, what we call early Baroque Italian style. And so he was imitating. He never, he never, he, unlike Schutz, his contemporary, or Sch Scheidt, he never actually got to leave Germany. Yeah. He was a sickly man. He, as you said, he had the jobs that, that like in Weimar and Leipzig that Bach had a hundred years later. He's about a hundred years before Bach. But he found a manuscript, I think by Viadana, that was published in Germany, or he got his hands on it somehow, and he really imitated that style, then created his own poetry. He would give it an Italian title to try and sound, I think, more international, uh, but then write German poetry under it, but using Italian characters like yeah, yeah. Tirsi and Fili and, and Corridon and all these, all these pastoral lovers get together in this set called Aletti Pastorali. Um, and so he he was writing songs to entertain his friends, is what was going on. Yeah, he just sounds like a, a real social guy, you know? He just wanted people together, whether it was for, for, you know, social drinking songs or if it was, you know, in the church, right? Because yeah, exactly. for a re religious gathering, he yeah, just seems yeah. like one of those people who thrived in a crowd yeah. and wanted to encourage that crowd. Well, And he never... His friends got to leave. Yeah. And Germany. he didn't. He didn't. Yeah. He had a rough life. Like, his... Um, like four out of five of his children died in infancy. His wife died during childbirth, mm -hmm. and he died young yeah, from like, four like four from, or something like that. Yeah, like 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 from things like he had like health issues like gout and and scurvy <laughs> things like it's like really you can die from those ailments. You know, yeah. had, it was it was tough for him. It was a tough life, and uh, you know, I'm I'm curious does does. It, can you feel that struggle in the music, or does he? Is that sort of an escape for him in his writing? I don't. I don't. You do not. Not in the music that we're doing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it, no. It feels like it's just light and cheerful and chipper, and um, there's always like some element of like, oh, this. I, I can't. You know, I, I'm either like so lovesick, I don't know what to do with myself, but then everything turns out well, or I'm desperate for love and I can't find it, and Cupid helps and I find it. So there's. It's always a. It's always like there's always a. Uh, a cheerful tone about everything we're doing in, in those particular songs. I mean, talk about a fun way to open a season. Um, if you're just tuning in, I'm chatting with Elroy Friesen, artistic director of Canzona. Uh, they perform uh, this Sunday, November 5th, at the Exchange Event Center in a concert titled Rain or Shine. We've spoken about Johann Hermann Schein. And, and just before I let you go, Elroy, we've had Rain on, on the program before, um, performed in the studio. Um, I, I'm a big fan. Um, can audience expect perhaps a little collaboration between yes. Rain and Kenzona? Yes, that is actually one of the cool things. Um, we, after you know, sort of sitting in and listening on her music, I, I asked if she'd be okay if we hired a composer to arrange one of her things. So Scott Reimer, who's also a member of of the ensemble and who's a teacher, choral conductor, and composer in town has a, done a gorgeous arrangement of one of one of Rain's songs, Over the Mountain. Uh, Carla Ferguson is going to be the soloist for that. Uh, so we have that cool thing. We're singing backup beat. We're having a rehearsal tonight with her. 
and we're going to learn some backup vocals for her, which is like out of our normal experience. There's no score. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what her plan's going to be and how she teaches it. It's gorgeous music as well. And then we've asked if she would learn a certain um, music for a while, a personal song. We're actually doing a little bit of personal on this program. And she is going to be the soloist while we're her backup, you know, her vocal backup band, which... So there is, there's collaboration that's happening. That's while well, we're starting some rehearsals tonight on that. We've been planning this for, for ages, but we actually get to do it for real tonight. So I'm really excited about that. Uh, this feels like a, a wonderful way to um, dive into to choral music, Baroque choral music, if it's not your usual cup of tea. Right? Uh, like yeah, if, I think this is the concert. If you want to come, I mean, there's, there is, this is a big year for Canzona. And, and, and later, as part of this 2023-24 season, there's going to be a grand sort of choral Baroque celebration. But, but this uh, concert really sets a, a different tone, a new tone, um, um, a very relaxed tone. Like you say, the bar's going to be open. And it's going to be a wonderful time to socialize, just like Shine would have wanted. Yeah, right? exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, one quick word on this, or one last word on this. Uh, if anyone's kind of sitting on the fence thinking, you know, Sunday night, I I'd love to be there. What, what What's sort of like the last pitch to get people to, to come on out and, and to check out this unique collaboration between Ken Zoma and, and, and Rain Hamilton? Oh, man. Well... I mean, I just the, the 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 these we often sing in our and perform in our baroque silo, mm -hmm. and to sort of blow that open and to 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 try different things musically. Um, I mean, that's what makes me most excited about this. Let's let's bring in more types of music and more more people into what we're doing. So, like, I think it's the most unique baroque collaboration I've ever been a part of, and I've been doing a lot of baroque music. This one, this one gets me super super excited. So come be part of the excitement. Uh, that's coming up this Sunday, November 5th. Uh, doors open at 7, show at 7.30 at the Exchange Event Center. Uh, November 5th, for details, head to canzona.ca. Elroy, thanks so much for being here. Thanks for having me.